Okay, just moments, just literally seconds after I just made that last clip, we came upon this horrific accident. We were about the yeah. second car at the scene. The car was still smoking. Um, they had gotten the one driver out of the flipped car, which was on fire, out, and he was bleeding pretty badly. And the lady who was in the car who pulled out in front of that car was still in her vehicle, and we rushed over there to her and uh, was able to get her out of the car. She was complaining of chest pains um, from the seatbelt. Yeah, we let her sit in our truck for a while to calm down until the ambulance came. And um, and uh, she's she's very upset. I, I don't think she's hurt too badly unless she has internal injuries that we don't know about. But as you can see from these clips, uh, the ambulance and sheriff and fire department and fire rescue paramedics are all here right now. The road's blocked. We're just right here at the accident scene. And um, the uh, paramedics said thank you for helping as much as we could. I don't know. I, we didn't do anything, but let the letter come sit out of the cold inside of the truck till the ambulance got here. But I hope that they will be okay. When you see something like that, it's just... Um, it's nerve-wracking. It's at the to say the least. It's a uh, gets you jittery, and we were we were scared there for a few minutes to get. We needed to get away from that car because that car was literally on fire. Yeah, the one turned over was on fire, so we had to get her away from that. But um, I hope they will be okay. And uh, we're just minutes away from our stop in Shelby, just literally like five or six minutes. You know, whenever you see something like that happen, uh, or uh, a terrible accident like that, it just, it really gets your heart, because we're on the road so much. All of us transporters are on the road so much, and it really makes things come into perspective, how much, tell your loved ones you love them. That's all I got to say, just tell your loved ones you love them. Well, we've taken a big deep breath and we're going to head to our place of rest for this evening in Shelby, Montana. Here's what Shelby looks like. You can still see the lights. You can still see the lights from the accident scene down there. Transport Bandits here. I'm Cheryl or Tennessee. I'm Jeff, Mr. Dimples, and you're watching Transport Bandits International Edition. <laughs> or International Incident. <laughs> we don't know. <laughs> we are headed to the Canada border for the first time. We've got a delivery to Lethbridge, Alberta, and uh, we have just left, uh, where was it, Shelby, Montana, going north. And we've got about 20 miles to the border. Uh, we've got all of our P's and Q's checked. Our Ride Can app is already filled out. Um, we have our passports and we have all our paperwork. And so, at least we think we do. We think we do. So we're hoping that there's no problem getting in and better yet, hoping that there's no problem getting back out. So stay tuned for our Transport Bandits Go International. Mr. Bones, he's pretty nervous about going into Canada and coming back out. He's got his passport right with him. Take a look at this. So, hopefully he won't have any problems. I don't know how they feel about transporting damn things. Mr. Bones, um, they not care if he has to sit at the border until we get back. You know why? This is one thing that Mr. Bones cares about. This is one thing he cares about. Yes. <laughs> he doesn't want to stay in Canada. He doesn't want to be confiscated. Look at him. He's got his passport with him. <laughs> Alright. Oh, He's buddy. very concerned. He is concerned. <laughs> Mr. Bose, you'll be okay. Okay, Canadian Customs loaded trucks must stop. Here we 
go. Jeff is giving our paperwork. Okay, we're coming over here to the side where the trucks park because we don't need the COVID testing. And we're going to eat on out right here. And we're through! Okay, now we need to stop in the Canadian uh, way station. Uh, it says oh, anything over 4,000 kilograms, and that's 8,800 or something pounds, which we are. So we're going to be pulling right in here to the Canadian welcome station. Welcome to Alberta. Okay! We're through. We're through! And it was easy. We did not cause an international incident. They were like, okay, we want you in here. Just give the me arrived can app worked perfectly. They were like, Mr. Dimples, heck yeah, come on in. <laughs> Transport Bandits International. Subscribe now. All you Canadians, subscribe. Transport Bandits. Actually, that would be Transport Bandits in. We won't be out until a few hours after we make our delivery. So we're stay in. tuned. We're deep in. Yep, we're in Canada and we're gonna make our delivery. Stay tuned, show you how our delivery goes. Show you a bit of Canada. She's gonna show you a bit of Canada. I got a little hint for you. A little spoiler alert. It looks a lot like Montana. <laughs> it looks exactly like Montana. <laughs> Don't know what I was expecting. Okay, so um, we were going to stop and get some lunch and hopefully order some Canadian bacon. Or that would be ham. But uh, everything's closed. Everything's Shut down closed. tight. They're terrified of Corona. <laughs> the only documents that they needed to see at the border was our passports and our barcode manifest, the one that we got emailed to us from Marcus at Synergy um, that I printed off in the vehicle before we got here. That was the only thing they needed to see from us. It was kind of disappointing. Uh, it wasn't for me. I wanted to breathe right I mean, now. we got a whole stack of paper for them. We wanted one. Yeah, we got like a massive amount of paper. What's paperwork. going on? No strip search? <laughs> Come on! <laughs> no strip search. The speed limit is 110 kilometers. And what is 110 kilometers? That is about, about 68 miles an hour. We will do 65. That was a fictional scene Cheryl showed me as <laughs> 65. So we just wanted to see uh, what the 110 kilometers was, just for a second. I will not exceed 65 miles an hour. So I will do approximately 104 kilometers per hour. Or less. We'll see how much. Yeah, I will be doing 104 kilometers per hour, so as not to exceed 65. I never exceed 65 while I have a camper on. That scene Cheryl showed you a moment ago was from another time when we didn't have a camper on. <laughs> All right, let's head to Lethbridge. <laughs> I know that we could have just Googled what 110 kilometers equals in miles per hour. But that wouldn't have been near as much fun. That wouldn't have been as fun. Come on, we're the bandits. Come on. Again, I did not have a camera on. We pulled, no, really? over, we pulled over, unhooked the camper, and then did our test. Yeah, then did our 110 test. Because we never go over 60. 
as the good people of Synergy do. This is Mr. Dimples. Transporter, biker, artist, international man of mystery. Out. Inspecting the unit. We are unhooking everything. Get everything down and off the camper. Got our tags off. We'll unhook everything except for the battery. Uh, the man inspecting the camper said they're getting nothing in from the U.S. Uh, we'll make this run as much as we can. This was an enjoyable run, quick in and out. Hopefully in and out. Uh, we're in, hopefully a quick out. So uh, we'll keep you updated here in Lethbridge, Alberta, Canada. Okay, we're here inside the dealership. Transport Bandits have delivered to Canada and they sell Phoenix lights here in the dealership. So Mr. we may use all our profits. Mr. Dimple's International Man of Mystery likes Phoenix lights. And knives. Lethbridge, Alberta, Canada. And what you're looking at right here is the Lethbridge High Level uh, Trestle Bridge. It is the world's longest, world's highest trestle bridge. This is information you will get nowhere else but here. And we just saw the train come across this trestle bridge. It is a scary looking ordeal. It's still coming across. It's still coming across. It's all right. This is one of the attractions you can see in Lethbridge, Alberta, Canada. And it's pretty cool. And this is the kind of things you see with a beautiful lady like this when you're an international man. <laughs> all right, let's check out some other scenes and head back to the United States. We made a successful delivery of our unit. And now we're going to grab some lunch if we can and head back to the United States. Let's go see if we can find some bacon. Or, in other words, ham. Ham. <laughs> Goodbye. Hey. And uh, this is the nature center that you can visit here, um, just under the train bridge, the trestle bridge. The train is still going across. and headed towards Fort Whoop Up. Yes, you heard me right, Fort Whoop Up. This is Fort Whoop Up, right there. Mr. Dimple, International Man of Mystery. We'll eat lunch at Tim Hortons. 
nothing more Canadian than that, right? Classic Canadian. <laughs> All right, let's go check it out. Yeah. Hey, hey, you say y'all. We both got pro football. <laughs> awesome. Oh, How's it go? We, we got bigger balls. We got bigger balls around here. <laughs> we got stronger beer. <laughs> yeah, but, but look at this beard. Right? Come on. We said y'all come back now, you hear? <laughs> okay, we just were in Tim Hortons and had a blast. Yeah, but, but we ordered a, a bacon turkey club sandwich, right? But this bacon appears to be American <laughs> bacon. And they've made it about as well as American hoping, has, has got it too. And I was hoping for <laughs> Canadian bacon. Um, we had a great time cutting up with the Tim Hortons people. We appreciate them singing that Canadian song for us. It was awesome. Look at the donuts we got here. We got Bav Bavarian cream, Boston cream, from and New York cheesecake in Canada. <laughs> they have plenty of Canadian eggs, but... They don't have any Canadian bacon. Oh well, maybe next time. going to be scanned now, coming back into America. God bless America! Mr. Dimples here. Now, man of international mystery. God bless America! <laughs> and, uh, they, it was it was much easier going into Canada than coming back in, although it was easy coming back in as well. Um, the procedure was... You pull up to the window, give him your passport. He asks you a lot of questions that, you know, he didn't really need to know. I think he's trying to trick you up. I think they train him that way. Okay, so when we were at the, uh, the window, the Border Patrol agent will ask you questions and then um, you just answer them. If you have nothing to hide, then you don't have nothing to worry about. He took our passports and uh, then he asked to open our, roll down our rear window. Well, we can't roll down our rear, rear window because we had had, you know, this outfitted for the Woodhouse sleeper berth, blah, blah, blah. We couldn't roll it down. I was going to open the door for him, but he came out of his little shack, opened up the door himself. Went through some of our stuff, made some comments, and I'm like, oh, somebody's got a big heavy kill here, they're expecting to get cold. You know, trying yeah, to be friendly, but really, it was just his way of going through our stuff. Well, he just, he just looked around a little bit underneath the pillows, and then he shut the door, and then um, he said, you are a commercial vehicle. He said, normally we would have to pay $13.50 for the commercial vehicle fee. And when we come back through. I ain't paying that synergy uh, to pay that. And well, synergy would reimburse you for that, of course. But but this time we did not have to pay because the Canadian officials weren't doing it for some reason this COVID. week. COVID. Because of COVID, they weren't doing taking the $13.50. So we didn't have to pay that. But I know that we will in the future. I asked him. He said, yes, we will have to do that in the future and gave us this little... Um, like informational packet about paying that commercial vehicle fee. Uh, then he asked us to pull forward to the x-ray machine. And um, so we just pulled forward. And um, the lady met us there. She told us how to drive through the x-ray machine. We did that. And then we got a little concerned because she walked over to the bay's doors and I, I thought, thought, oh no. I thought for sure she was going to open them and say, come on in. And they but would pull did. out everything from our truck and we'd have to pack it all back in, search our truck. She was just checking the x-ray. She was just checking the x-ray. She said, you guys are great to go on through. Have a great day. So we just we rolled did. on through. Yeah, back up. At that point, I got concerned and I asked her, am I going to have to go through this x-ray machine? 
every time I come across this border because, you know, this might give me brain cancer or something. Build up in your system, right? And uh, she said that it was just a random thing. She said this morning she comes in and she added on her email, X-ray truck. And she said that the x-ray machine actually has less radiation than eating a banana a day. Now, where did she get that information? I don't know. I, I, I'll be honest with you, Mr. Dimple does not believe that. Because if this machine is powerful enough to x-ray your truck, it's putting something in you. Anyway, anyway, it was easy. It was easy to cross the border. It was easy for us this time. Now, it may be a completely different story next time. And so, you don't see the transport van that's going to Canada more often. I want to go to BC. I want to take that ferry to and, New Belgland. You know, you know, in a couple years, you might see me grow up like a fifth of six stone or something. I don't know. <laughs> from the x ray Okay, so that's it for the Canadian Maybe crossing. Maybe I'll grow a third nipple. I don't know. No, third nipple. Ever. Who knows? Okay, so that was the great crossing. That was a great trip into Canada. We're going to do this again. Extra 20 cents a mile from Indiana just to go 60, 60 miles in, into the border. Yeah, and that was just a standard load. It wasn't a hot load. Nope, standard load paid us 20 cents or more. And that's, uh, and that's Synergy, and it was I'm fantastic Synergy. Load. Thank you. We're going to try and get, thanks, some, Synergy. get us some hot loads or old thanks, loads. Thanks for all that work you did, Marcus. Yes, thank you, Dispatcher Marcus, for um, submitting all our paperwork. Four times. <laughs> Four times over, because you have to make sure you've got both names on that Canadian manifest. If you're team driving, your dispatcher needs to submit to the Canadian government your Canadian manifest, make sure there are both names on the manifest. You gotta make sure your license plates are correct. You know, all that stuff. Let your dispatch. Go over those papers yeah. with a fine tooth comb yeah. when you get those back. You make know, sure there's dispatch, nothing wrong. You don't have to worry about none of that. Your dispatcher will take care of all that. You just have to look at them and make sure your license plate and your name is right. And, and all you need to cross into Canada was the passport, the manifest, which has the barcode at the top that I printed off yesterday. That's all he wanted. That's all we not needed. Other than that we had already filled out the Arrive Can, the Arrive Can app and filled that out answering the COVID questions of why we would be exempt from quarantining. And they already had that on their computer, so it was so easy. Yeah, it was easy. So we're definitely going to do this again. So look for us in the future, run into Canada, and maybe we'll go to FAMP next time. FAMP National Park, which is awesome, like gorgeous. FAMP, Jasper. Let's, yeah, awesome. You ready to head back to Indiana now? Yep. We're going to go see if we can find a little going south. And let's have some fun deadheading, because this is the fun side of RV transport. We'll After get, we've left the camper yeah, in Canada, you know, we can have fun. Yeah, we'll have fun deadheading, but... I had fun taking the camera. I did too. I had a great time. We saw all those buffalo. Yeah, but I did. I might. Yeah, I think I did get some clips of buffalo. We saw the wild horses. Wild horses. We saw some more wild horses. Didn't I get saw, the camera out in time. I huh? saw prong horse. But we're going to show you on the way back. Hopefully, we're going to show you some more bison. We're going to try and look at some of the world's largest stuff, like New Salem Zoo, the world's largest cow. Join us for the fun side of RV transport. And now we're just going to have some fun on the way back, deadheading back towards Indiana. So join us for a ride. Check out this scene.
Good night, everyone. We'll see you in the morning. So stay tuned to the Transport Bandits. We got some fun videos on the showing the fun side of RV transport. Is that it? That's it. Transport nope. Bandits. One more thing. What? Mr. Dimples, International Man of Mystery, wants you to subscribe. Transport Bandits, out. out.